Last year, I finally decided I need a Notion replacement. I was sick of big tech stealing my data, their employees stealing my nudes, and feeding my high-quality, high-value personal notes and documents to sell to advertisers or train large language models. They're all doing it. I don't care what their privacy policy says. One day they're just going to update it, and it's, oh yeah, your data is yours. Except, psych, we're creating personally identified consumer profiles of your internet activity, GPS data, and selling it to advertisers. And yes, even though you didn't upload them, Notion has your nudes. I don't make the rules. So before I waste your time, I need a Notion replacement for a personal wiki, notes, to-dos, and documents, not the 400 other things that Notion tries to be. So I needed a program that is free, non-commercial, open source. This is philosophical, and most people don't care, so this might not be the right video for you. I don't want development to be beholden to venture capital, prioritize monetizing a cloud service, or, underrated reason, build on pointless checkbox features for the sake of marketplace differentiation. So if it's run by a business or has a pricing tab on the website, even if it's totally free for personal use, it's probably not for me. Like LogSeek is funded by $4 million in venture capital. Cool, get that bag. I just need to turn my text files into slightly more organized text files. I think this is a problem that can be solved without incorporating a business to extract value from the solution. Local and self-hosted. Privacy and data ownership is the biggest reason I needed to get off Notion, so there's no sense in just giving my data over to another cloud service, no matter how private it currently claims to be. Storing notes as plain text. I want zero vendor lock-in. I want to sync my notes using whatever program I want. I want to use my own version control. I want to be able to view my files on everything from a Commodore 64 to an Amazon Kindle without worrying about client software. When my new software inevitably dies, I just want to dump my notes folder into whatever the new thing I'm using is. And fast. Notion is the slowest note-taking software I have ever used. And while I said this bit, I was going to put in a little clip of me clicking a link and it taking two seconds for the page to load. But instead, for dramatic effect, I went to click a database view and the page took 24 seconds to load. Notion is garbage! Alright, and some nice-to-haves. Simple, I don't need a second brain, or dear god, a life operating system with databases, Kanban charts, ah! whatever endless features. I just need to store notes, scripts, recipes, travel plans, whatever. A bright future, throwing this out there because Dendron suddenly ceased development in the middle of my search. Encrypted notes. A lot of these projects are just like, oh, encrypt your entire hard drive. We're not an encryption project. Well, guess what? I do encrypt my hard drives, but I do this really weird thing called decrypting them when I'm using my computer. And I also sync and back up my notes to all sorts of devices, which, yes, should be encrypted, but it's still nice to know if I accidentally sync or back up my notes somewhere that's not encrypted, that personal info and account numbers and stuff would still be encrypted within my notes. All right, let's quickly run down everything that didn't make the cut so you don't think I forgot about your favorite note app because you're just watching this video to see if some guy on YouTube ended up using the same thing as you. Leave a thumbs down when I get to your favorite. Proprietary or commercial software, Obsidian, OneNote, Evernote, Roam, LogSeek, Typora, BoostNote, StandardNote, SimpleNotes, Notable, used to be open source, isn't anymore, Mem.ai, NotesNook, and Google Keep. Programs that don't store notes in plain text are Cherry Tree, Laverna, Tomboy NG, TiddlyWiki, I used to use that in college, Tiddly Roam, had no idea that that existed, but that's cool as hell. And finally, Joplin and Trillium, which look like two nice options if you don't care that notes are just stored in a SQLite database. I did consider all of these, though, and the case in point is Dendrin, which wouldn't have made my cut anyway, but I loved how Dendrin stores notes via hierarchically organized file names in a flat directory. This was my favorite method of any program I considered, and I adopted a similar system myself. Now, you may have noticed I just threw out almost every note app you ever considered, because yeah, the non-commercial open source plain text note software scene is a little bit niche. I ended up with four programs that I really like that probably suit different people. In the end, I don't think it matters what you use as long as you stick with it and use it to the full potential and get off the productivity treadmill that you're currently on because it's a disaster, I promise. Before that, real quick, three runners up did meet all of my criteria. Zettler is a markdown editor with a really fancy editing window. It's got these gooey tables which save as plain text and yes, that is very fancy. It has this little hidden folding bar on the left side of the editing window. As you can see, everything resizes and recolors itself. It is a very beautiful program. The only minor issue I even have with it is that sometimes it feels a little bit too fancy. You've got this little window that pops up whenever you select text, and sometimes when you try to select something, the text window just tries to guess what you're trying to select rather than go where the cursor is. I have no idea why programs ever do this. You also have to control click links just because it's primarily an editing window. But super minor nitpicks aside, if you were looking for like full featured desktop software, Zettler is by far the most beautiful program on the list.
There's also VNote, which, wow, 10,000 stars on GitHub, and I have never heard of this come up anywhere once. Maybe there's some cool feature, but this really just seems worse than Zettler to me. This is also a markdown editor, and it has a toggle between editing mode and read mode. Except on two separate computers, I couldn't get the read mode to work, and you can't follow links from within edit mode. Which kind of made it unusable. I mean, this is Linux, so it's probably my fault for being a dumb user, but I'm just saying my experience here. And then there's also NB, if you're a nerd. This is a single bash script that runs from the terminal and organizes notes for you. You can open and edit the notes in whatever text editor you want. It even has fancy features like linked notes, encrypted notes, inserting images into notebooks. The only reason it's not for me is because I can just use plugins from within a text editor to do pretty much all of this rather than having to run a separate script alongside it. All right, Zim. Now we're getting to the really excellent stuff. Zim is as simple as it gets, a hierarchical list of notes. The editor doesn't support Markdown, but instead it has a very snappy rich text editor where you use shortcuts like Control-123 to make headings or Control-I to italicize. Attachments and pictures just drag into the editor like you'd expect. The files themselves are stored as legible plain text, but it does have its own weird syntax, and attachments and images are stored in a separate folder. In Zim, each note is a parent node to the notes underneath it, meaning the notes organize themselves hierarchically rather than having a folder structure on top of it. Basically, each folder is also a note. This is similar to Notion or Dendron, and I personally love it, but most apps seem to use the folder or graph paradigms rather than just pure hierarchical notes for some reason. It's also got all the features you might want, like tags, tables, task lists, journals, encrypted notes, but by default, it doesn't burden you with any of that crap. All of those are available as plugins, and you don't have to dig through GitHub or Google them. They're right in the menus, and you just enable them with two clicks. My biggest gripe is that the table plugin, while it does allow GUI editing of tables, you can't tab between cells, which makes it feel ridiculous and clunky. It's also really ugly with this default green theme. You can change the theme with GTK3 themes, but especially on Windows computers, I tried a bunch and none of them looked good out of the box. So expect to do manual theming because no one is making Zim themes. If you hate software in general, if you can't stand seeing a project that you like get bloated over time with pointless features, if you use Microsoft Outlook at work and you don't understand how an email client that you use to do three things can possibly have so many tabs, menus, ribbons, and buttons, Zim is probably the program for you. It is purely what you need to take simple notes and anything else is hidden from you until you specifically enable it. Zim genuinely makes me sad we live in a world without more software like Zim. All right, if you want something a little more featureful and a little bit nicer looking than Zim, down from the heavens comes this traditional stupid markdown app with a double pane view fighting for first place with Tomboy-NG to be the worst named application on this list, QOwn Notes. This software is so obscure in the productivity space, you could barely find a YouTube video where someone even talks about it, let alone an entire video dedicated to it. The Linux experiment mentioned it for a whole minute once, which I'm positive is the most exposure this has ever gotten. The world has been so consumed by their notions and obsidians and vims that there is no room in anyone's heart left for a simple native desktop markdown notes app. But I love this program, man. It has the snappy editor with the markdown preview. There is no stupid JavaScript stuff that pops up while you type. It doesn't try to organize your notes into logical blocks or guess what you want to select. When you paste text in, there's not going to be any weird formatting. And it has a truly customizable interface that can be as dumb and bloated or as minimalist as you want. Again, I hate menus and buttons and panels and software that are constantly on screen, but I never use, and you can literally turn all of it off in QO Notes. For example, it has hierarchical tags, meaning you navigate to a folder and you've got all your notes here, and then you can click through your tag hierarchy to narrow down which of those notes you want to see. This is apparently a killer feature to some people. I don't even use tags. Not for me, it's gone. The navigation has separate folder navigation and notes navigation panes, so first you go to the folder that has notes within it, and then in a separate panel, you click the note within that folder. I'm more used to like a single tree where, you know, everything appears in the same pane, but like I guess I could get used to this. But then I go to settings and I go to experimental and there's literally one setting and it makes the navigation look exactly how I want it to. It's like the program is reading my mind. Up top, there's an incredibly convenient encrypted notes feature that's easier to use than the vast majority of these apps. Thank you. 
And look at this, I'm synced to my next cloud server and I can just check and restore version history for every note. Does Obsidian even do this so nicely? And if it does, don't tell me. Yeah, you can use Git to do this manually, but this is so convenient. And I mean, this is Linux. You can't dismiss a notification without opening the terminal and checking Stack Overflow, but I just put in my server IP and credentials into settings and all of this just worked automatically, no problems. Maybe it's just years of software abuse that I've dealt with, but I just didn't expect this feature to work with like one click. And I know this is a minor thing, but this program, it's like whatever the opposite of Death by a Thousand Cuts is. All these good themes are built right in. It doesn't come with a crappy light and a crappy dark theme and like you have to go to GitHub to go find a real theme. You can just pick Monokai, a real welcome change after looking at Zim. Like, hey, I still love Zim, but I don't know guys, maybe build in like one dark theme that's not green. <laughs> Nothing gets in my way with QO notes. Nothing pops up, nothing slows down, nothing acts in an unexpected way. There's nothing I don't want that I can't just simply hide. If I right click a note, I can open it in my file manager. Vnote has that, but Zim and Zettler don't. It's not make or break, but it's a five second convenience. If I press control and mouse wheel up and down, that increases or decreases the font size, which is exactly what I would expect it to do. For comparison, Zim does nothing, Zettler does nothing, and Vnote works the same way, but it scrolls the text at the same time, so it's annoying. And yet guessing hotkeys is maybe not the best metric of software quality, but I don't know, man. When you download someone's bootleg free GitHub project and everything just works exactly how you would expect, it just feels a little magical. The minor issues I have with it are inherent to any Markdown editor. The split view for Markdown editors just feels like a fundamental design problem with Markdown in general. It is just this really weird thing. The editor doesn't have as many fancy rich text features. It will change your font size and colors, but you can't display images in line, so you will need to look at the preview pane to see images. It does have this little table editor though, and that's kind of nice. I kind of feel like the same way as this Reddit post. Am I missing something? Why don't the simple markdown editors come up more in lists of productivity tools? Surely there are people who just need to take some notes and don't need to spend their lives optimizing productivity software into a life operating system. What happened to those Apple Notes people? Surely there are people who have seen the light and they're overcomplicating their productivity workflows, right? Big thumbs up to QO Notes. I know it doesn't look very distinct from a lot of other Markdown programs, but I can't emphasize enough how I never had to dig through documentation. I never had to search the web to solve an issue and everything worked exactly how I expected it to. Now, before I continue, I'm about to talk about Emacs and NeoVim. And I very much believe it's possible to cross the point where futzing with your productivity software outweighs the benefit of doing so. How much time have you wasted getting your Notion layout just right? Background pictures here, columns just so, cute icons. Maybe you've wasted time refactoring your Obsidian graph, moving index pages around, fixing and changing backlinks, trying some stupid new system you saw on YouTube that works for someone else. You are wasting time right now. Watching a video about productivity is not productivity. I don't care that you're on your morning run and you just put this random video on in the background. The fact that you're here means you are prone to this. If you genuinely care about being productive, Emacs and Vim are bullshit. I have spent many, many hours doing random things like shaving a few milliseconds off my boot up time, optimizing key bindings, or troubleshooting random GitHub extensions that purport to make my life ever so slightly easier. Literally while I was recording footage for this video, I found there was a breaking change in Emacs org mode since I last used it. So I had to roll back to an earlier version of org mode, which involves pinning the old version of org, deleting a directory, rerunning an install script, Thankfully, smart people on GitHub already figured this out for me. And this isn't common, but this is stupid troubleshooting crap that's not your fault that you'll have to deal with if you don't just use cute own notes. And this is besides the initial investment of just learning how to use these if you're not a software developer. If you already live in these editors and you have your hyper-optimized configs, you're probably already taking notes with them, so you don't need my experience from this video. Unlike probably most people watching this who care about things like free and open source software, I'm not a software developer, so I'm coming from the perspective of someone who mainly uses these text editors for notes and tasks rather than someone who completely lives in them for their job. So if you're a normal person who actually needs to be productive, you kind of don't want none of this. The learning curve, the troubleshooting, the endless tweaking, like seriously just use Zim. But that being said, these are obviously the most personal, customizable, and by far the most fun pieces of software on this list. Fun is not a productivity metric, but life is short. 
Last year, I had no idea what Emacs actually was. I saw people on Hacker News touting org mode, which just looked like a way to fold bulleted lists, but otherwise I thought it was just some terminal text editor for boomer diehards who use weird 1970s key bindings. As someone who has never even considered Emacs a sensible piece of software to use in the 21st century, Emacs fucking rules! Emacs is really everything. It's both a terminal program and a GUI program, which I didn't even know because it's so text-based. Mouse support is totally reasonable with Emacs and an intended feature, although your nerd friends will still make fun of you for that. But it works fine. And the GUI allows for things like switching between fonts, font sizes, and inline images. No stupid secondary markdown window required. Having a terminal version of the app with most of the same features means I can SSH into my home server and run it from any device. Having the text-based GUI but also a terminal version really gives you the best of both worlds. Now, I use Doom Emacs, which basically gives you Vim key bindings, an easy-to-modify configuration, and a nice theme. Because, I mean, I'm not crazy, Emacs kinda sucks, but Doom Emacs makes it super usable out of the box. I did watch like 10 hours of tutorials on how to set up Emacs from scratch, and then after all that, I ditched my scratch config and kept using Doom Emacs. So what is org mode? I don't even know, man. Uh, it's another rabbit hole on top of Emacs. It has all the things you think it has, automatically bulleting lists, checkboxes, headings, folding. Of course, you can link between files into headings and other files. It has its own scheduling and agenda system. You can put dates and deadlines on tasks and it will show you your whole agenda. This isn't some Emacs to-do list feature that's separate from your document. Your agenda is built from the to-do list and deadline syntax in your document. Everything in org mode is built from the plain text in the document. It is like a dream come true. And the tables, oh my god, the tables. You just start typing your content and put bars around cells and it automatically formats the table for you. Tab and shift tab to move around, create separators with just two characters, just this super intuitive syntax for things like alignment. I said Zettler is the program for tables, but if you're committed to the way of plain text, I have never had a better time making tables. And it's not just the formatting, you can evaluate expressions, you can run code, you can crunch data from within your org document. It's a programmable spreadsheet in text form. This is where org mode went from, okay, so it's basically a markdown editor with some really nice tables, to org mode is a being of unlimited power and I'm staring into the abyss of possibility and I don't even know where to start. Like, I realize these super fancy features, like running code from within a text document, is totally defeating the purpose of vendor lock-in, but also Emacs has been around for 50 years, so maybe this one program gets a pass. And on top of all of this, there's the plugin Org Roam, as in Roam Research. This gives you backlinks in your graph, which I kind of question the true necessity of, but maybe it's your thing. But it also gives you this really convenient note capture buffer with different note templates. I've got one template that puts hierarchical notes into the correct spot in the hierarchy, and then another template that stores unorganized notes in a separate directory. My system is chaos, but you know what, shut up, your system is too. You don't even have a system. You're watching a YouTube video on notes apps. Another thing I really like about OrgRome is it stores every note with a unique identifier. This means that you can link to any file regardless of where it is in the directory structure or its file name. So if you like to organize your notes into directories or you find yourself renaming them, it's never going to mess up your links. And I guess if any plugin developers are watching this, just do this. Why do I gotta worry about what, changing my file name, removing my file, messing up all my links? Just use this unique identifier. It is so much better. I've lamented complicated, overly featureful software earlier in this video, and Emacs is objectively complicated and overly featureful. But it's also Willy Wonka's chocolate factory for editing text. It just feels magical and unlimited because it's so text focused, but the GUI allows for things that a terminal couldn't do. And unexpectedly, it was totally not intimidating to get started with. I found Doom Emacs relatively easy to pick up considering Emacs's reputation for stupid key bindings. And I was only one of those occasional Vim users before this. It wasn't some grueling learning curve like switching your keyboard layout. If you're this deep into YouTube watching a video about open source software, you either know it already or you're motivated enough to learn how to use Emacs. If Emacs has a main issue, it's not exactly snappy. No issue on my high spec Linux desktop, on Windows a little bit chunkier, on my underpowered work issued Lenovo Windows 11 laptop, it was slow. There's no two ways about it. Firefox can be slow, we all still love Firefox, but it wasn't great. 
And on my phone, it sucked. And I'm not talking about some app. I literally just installed Doom Emacs on my phone, which surprisingly worked without any issue, except that it's garbage and you shouldn't do that. So I figured my best bet was to install Doom Emacs on my home server so that if I'm on a slow device, I could just SSH into my server and run it from there. Except that it doesn't run well in a Raspberry Pi either. Aha, now you think you see where this is going. This is where he's going to say he switched to Vim because it's faster. No, no, I bought a $500 Ryzen 7 mini PC alongside my Raspberry Pi, and I specifically overspected it to make sure it would run Emacs as smooth as possible. This thing can play AAA video games. What did you buy your home server for? Home automation, virtualization, storage? Yeah, I bought it to run a heavyweight text editor. Emacs? Rules! I'm, I'm telling you guys. It's not for old nerds. It is a totally cool program for normal people. I realize that outburst does not make me sound like a normal person. All right, as much as I love Emacs, I find myself using a wide variety of computers and I found myself SSH'd into that home server a lot. While it's super cool that there's a terminal version of Emacs that basically has all the same features as the GUI version, when like 75% of the time I'm missing things like images, fonts, and font sizes, I'm starting to wonder why I'm going through all this effort to run basically a terminal program most of the time. Which, of course, is what led me to NeoVim. Ladies and gentlemen, we have officially reached the point in the video where I can make the thumbnail, I switched from Emacs to NeoVim, and 5,000 people will watch it just to have their pre-existing opinion validated. NeoVim is, of course, just a text editor, and it's as far from Notion as we can get, and we're giving up fancy things like fonts and images off the bat now. There are some workarounds to get some kind of image support, like with NB, but this is a terminal program, so that stuff is obviously not first class. And another cool thing about Emacs is that you're probably not really deciding what plugins you're going to use for notes. You're going to use the built-in org mode, or you're just going to get the org roam plugin that goes with org mode. With Vim, not only is there Vim versus NeoVim, but conservatively, let's say Vim Wiki, Wiki Vim, Task Wiki, Vim Wikiki, Neuron.Vim, Neuron.NVim, different project, Vim to 2 Notoire, Vim Notes, Vim Table Mode, Neorg, Vim Org Mode, NVim Org Mode, Org Vim, Vim Rome, Vim Settle, Vim Zettle Caskin, ZK NVim, Zettle.Vim. The list goes on and on with projects that don't have as easily guessable names. And you've got Markdown, Org Syntax, Vim Wiki Syntax, Norg Syntax. There are a lot more options and a lot more partial implementations, whereas Org Mode is sort of this monolithic complete thing. Anyway, my notes look like this now. I have truly achieved my goal of turning my text files into slightly more organized text files. I'm not going to pump any particular plugins because they share a lot of functionality. What really matters is how easy it is to create link and search notes, and basically all of them are good at that with some differences in their accoutrements. I ended up using Neorg, which is not at all a very mature plugin. And some might say needlessly reinventing the wheel by introducing its own syntax, but I really didn't want to use an org mode plugin that had like one or two missing features or differences from Emacs and then just say, well, this sucks compared to real Emacs. So instead I'm using an unfinished plugin. So it's really easy to make excuses when it's missing functionality. Also, it has the best logo by far. You guys don't make your software choices based on logos. Zim, ugh. Q own notes, what year is it? Logseek, it looks like a paw print, stupid. And Obsidian, wait, what? This logo has reactive reflections? Is that even legal in graphic design? All right, screw the rest of this video. I'm going back to Obsidian. But for real, I think there are enough other YouTube videos going over what Vim plugins make the greatest system ever. I'm a big fan of hierarchically organized index pages with numeric identifiers. You'll notice that what I was doing in Vim was simplified from the fancy table I tried to make in Emacs. I was really into Emacs tables when I was using that. But my pages are numbered like 202.1a, and that's my trip notes for the Colorado Trail. 200 is hobbies, 202 is backpacking, 202.1 is trips, 202.1a, the first trip Colorado Trail. This way the files organize themselves hierarchically by file name and each note has a unique ID. But um, again, personal note taking systems are nonsense. You do things that I think are a pointless waste of time. I do things you think are incorrectly structured and destroying my life. Everyone has a personal system. All of us take notes wrong. You know what? Do your quote unquote modified Zettelkasten system as if every note taking system ever devised isn't just a slightly different way of organizing blurbs of text. So is NeoVim good? Yeah. 
Have I achieved my goal of distraction-free, fast, simple notes that is obviously never going to be commercialized? Absolutely yes. Does this mean this is the most productive software I could be using? No. I find NeoVim harder to configure than Emacs, and to be clear, NVChad and Doom Emacs, which are both text editor distributions for dummies. There's been another learning curve, and that means many more hours of tutorials and troubleshooting. NeoVim does less out of the box than anything else, so I have to find and configure more plugins. Things in NeoVim also seem to change a lot. Two years ago, people were using VimScript configuration files. Now everyone uses Lua configuration files. VimPlug used to be the package manager of choice, then it was Packer, and now it's Lazy. The organization plugin I use, Neorg, isn't even finished. So I have to follow development to see if I like any of the future features, or if I stick my nose up at it, call it bloated, and have to go find something else. So I have my perfect, simple note system with a turbulent, overly customizable piece of software. But again, it's fun. Life is short. We all have our weaknesses. It's a weird trade-off. My first recommendation to someone off the street would probably just be to use Zim. My mom is never going to wrap her head around NeoVim, and even if she does, she's not going to keep up with it over time and something's going to break. The search for perfect software when I already have perfectly fine software has never stopped. You know how it goes. This, look at how long this video is. NeoVim is certainly as simple, fast, and usable as I could ever want, and Vim is super popular and it will be supported in some form forever. But when you have perfect, why not search for something better for no reason? My next plan is getting rid of NVChad, which is a NeoVim-based config that I ended up not really needing. Emacs does not resemble software a human being would use out of the box. Doom Emacs makes Emacs totally sane and usable. NeoVim, on the other hand, already resembles a usable text editor, and the NVChad configuration directory structure is a lot more work and reading to understand. For example, I don't need tabs. In Doom Emacs, I just open init.el, find the tabs module, and comment it out. In NVChad, I go to Lua custom plugins.lua and I have to find wherever the exact name of the plugin is documented in NVChad docs and then set enabled to false. So yeah, stupid user just has to read the docs, but I only used NVChad to begin with because I found Doom Emacs so incredibly useful. And on NeoVim, I think it would be easier to actually just roll my own config than to turn off all the crap I don't need with one of these base configs. I also looked at simpler editors that software developers seem to turn their nose up at, simply because it's not Vim. Cocoon is a really interesting modal editor that's almost like if Vim normal and visual modes were combined and the key mappings were reversed. It emphasizes a limited scope, so it doesn't include things like window management, file management, or IDE features, but it does have a small wiki and table plugin. I really like its philosophy of just being a text editor rather than an entire development platform. There's also Helix, which seems like Cocoon with some more developer crap built in, but it doesn't support plugins yet, so it's not really in consideration right now. Learning and switching to such a similar yet unique program would certainly not pay productivity dividends, but there's a part of my brain nagging me that Cocoon is part of a very small class of text editor that actually sort of follows the Unix philosophy of doing one thing well, rather than becoming a shambling mass of features. But to be clear, like Vim is a super useful and usable shambling mass of features. And I even looked at super bare bones hipster editors like Viz and NeatVI. NeatVI is something like 6,000 lines of C code and you could forget about unnecessary features like mouse support or opening multiple files. But it does have a key mapping that opens a file path under the cursor. And I mean, this sure isn't VimWiki, but this is dangerously close to the core of a really simple linked note system. We have gone too far down the rabbit hole. I just kind of wanted to take you here for the sake of it. It's kind of hilarious that a video that started with the words, I need a notion replacement, took us to the most hipster text editors out there like Cocoon and NeatVI. But if you want to be the coolest, most suckless, most minimal leet note taking hacker out there, I don't know how it's possible to get more minimal than NeatVI. You'd just be using ED at that point, or God forbid, a notebook. But and this isn't engagement bait, just look at my channel, there's no subscribers, this obviously is never getting monetized. If you have gone some ultra-minimalist software route that's not just like one text file, I'm really interested to know what's actually usable for you. Anyway, I hate software, I hate computers, I hate note-taking. The fact that I even like four entire programs in a single category of software, and I didn't just end up as one of those single giant text file people, is astounding to me. You should try and use any of these, or I don't know, leave an angry comment about me dismissing LogSeek. This video is way too long, I know. 
This script started months ago as an ode to QO notes being such an under-discussed note-taking platform. Then the script shifted to, wait, Emacs is actually a great piece of software for regular people script? And now it ended up as a, I guess I'm just using Vim plugins like every other nerd to take notes video. Which is kind of a zazzle finale because there's already tons of popular videos from Linux nerds and software devs about how great Vim is. Alright, bye. Good luck in your search. Do I have hope for you? No. If you've watched this whole video, you are lost. You're just gonna click the sidebar and click another productivity video. You're gonna tweak your system more. You're not actually gonna use your notes and get things done. Amir? Yes, Amir, I'm talking to you. This is your wake-up call. Stop watching these YouTube videos. Get some actual work done.